Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Jean-Benoît Larouche and uh, I worked uh, two years as a field application engineer at the uh, company NewTech. And uh, now I'm uh, in partnership with NewTech uh, doing my master degree um, uh, yeah, education at the Laval University LTRS. And my goal today is to show you how uh, all the model-based design flow can help you uh, to speed up your uh, algorithm development. So to show, uh, to show that, I choose to present you, I will say, uh, I will say well, presently, uh, really fastly, a, a case study about uh, the generation of the i3 standard, the, the well-known i3 standard 802.11a preamble. So we'll start for, uh, for um, at first by the generation of that preamble, and after that we'll design how uh, should we detect such a preamble, which is uh, important in OFDM to the block uh, uh, to, de to decode the block boundary uh, of an OFDM packet? And after that, <clears throat> I will show uh, how we can move, in fact, to a real-world application when you have a actually a real uh, processor like an FPGA, like the card we have here. And uh, I think the main point for me is going to be to show you how we can easily make a move from an M code to a system generator model like who Philippe explained and to, to have some kind of bridge and tools to, to help debug and to make uh, also the transition to uh, an FPGA HDL world uh, really, I will say, um, flawlessly. So uh, and I'll be, yeah, I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about the preamble at first. After that, we're going to see a simple M-code simulation. And uh, after that, we're going to see the model and how the tools uh, can help us to debug, uh, debug and develop uh, really fast uh, such uh, application. And at the end, we're going to somehow extrapolate over uh, the, the specific demo that uh, we've developed. And uh, in fact, it's, a, it's actually my uh, master degree project. So we'll see uh, what is the stage of this project right now. And, uh, in fact, the beautiful thing out of it is that everything can run on, an, on a big Vertex 6 PGA, but uh, I didn't write, wrote any uh, single line of HDL code, which is uh, the big advantage here. <clears throat> so at first, in the i3 specification, the PLCP preamble is mainly used for synchronization. Here you have, I'll say, the, the frame structure of the, I'll say, Wi-Fi standard packet, and mainly we'll focus on the first one. <clears throat> the first, uh, I'll say, quarter of the packet, which is that uh, the preamble which is used for synchronization purposes. So mainly, that's, uh, that, uh, that packet, that, that packet uh, line here is made of 10 sequence which are periodic. And we will see, uh, just as a side note, uh, why the fact that this uh, preamble is periodic bring a really good advantage at uh, detection purposes. So uh, knowing that uh, Wi-Fi, the 802.11a specification is based around OFDM, uh, building such a repeating pattern is uh, pretty easy using uh, an IFFT algorithms by loading only uh, the, <coughs> the subcarriers with indices of factor of four. And to show that, it's pretty simple. Using the 802.11a specification number, uh, the fundamental frequency uh, under that specification is three, uh, 312 kilohertz. So uh, <clears throat> if, you multi if you divide by four uh, the period, you get a frequency uh, four times higher. And if you plot these, you say I plot these, actually the, the, the one dot 25 megahertz, twice as that and four times as uh, as fast, and you see that the addition of, of all the harmonics gives, in fact, a repeating pattern. So the only, uh, the only step that will be left to do is only copy uh, one quarter of the pattern and copy it 10 times to have the actual 802.11 uh, preamble. So for the that's for the generation. <coughs> uh, so uh, how to implement that? First of all, 
uh, usually you use uh, M code in MATLAB uh, because it's a, a really, I will say, a really fast road to proof of concept to implement uh, such algorithms since uh, you got floating point algorithms, but you got also a big, uh, complete uh, digital processing uh, library with all the functionalities like uh, additive Gaussian noise or uh, f uh, digital filterings or uh, uh, FFT, some kind of application. And also it's really easy to debug with graphs, with plots, with a step-by-step -step instruction in your code. So it's really easy uh, path to do that. But the, I will say after that, when your goal is to implement it in a real world processor like a, a, an FPGA, uh, there are some things that the M code actually uh, cannot do, which is, uh, first of all, the M code is not ready for an FPGA application because the FPGA need a VGL code. So we know that at some point, if we have our proof of concept, we'll need to do some kind of transition from the M code to the HDL code. And we'll see how our uh, model based design view help us to do that. Uh, and also the M code is all based on the uh, floating point architecture. So all your results are going to be based around that. So sometimes you will have surprise when you go into an FPGA with fixed point uh, architecture. And also uh, the M code, since it's an interpreted code with a bunch of processing uh, libraries, uh, sometimes it's not that easy to do, for example, uh, imaginary number, uh, complex number multiplication uh, in an FPGA, some, some, some stuff like that. <coughs> and also, you can, uh, for example, some loop in your M code or some function in your M code can be, uh, I would say, can take more uh, time than you think in a real world, uh, uh, in a real world FPGA. Uh, <coughs> so that's the kind of risk that uh, a resource that take, uh, in fact, cost a lot in terms of development time and the model-based design help a lot to reduce these, uh, these risks as high as possible. So for example, let's uh, retake the generation of our preamble here. The code is pretty simple. Uh, on the left, you have my subcarriers. Uh, we'll, uh, we're exporting the data to workspace. We're, use, we're gonna use that later. And we're doing the, uh, we're doing the EFFT, which is pretty simple in uh, MATLAB, right? Using the EFFT function. And after that, we're doing noise addition and plotting for debugging. So we can see the generated actual uh, repeating pattern of the 802.11a. And with noise, we see that's uh, actually not recognizable with our eyes. But <coughs> so uh, in M code, this was developed like in five minutes. It's, it's pretty simple. But if you want to do that in a fissure, it's going to be a little bit more complex. <coughs> So now how to detect the noisy pattern that we just see. Uh, usually uh, the matching filter, a match filter is really an optimal linear filter to detect, to detect such uh, repetitive pattern in uh, additive Gaussian noise. <coughs> so just to show you, uh, the match filter, uh, like uh, maybe all, uh, a lot of people uh, you know, it's only to do the convolution of the inverse of the impulse response of the actual uh, repeating pattern that we want to detect. So that also can be really uh, done easily using uh, a convolution operator in, uh, in MATLAB also. So on a side note, maybe on a, le on a learning note, I'll say you see that the fact that the pattern is repetitive bring a really uh, a nice shape with really peak which adds up uh, uh, if you have more uh, pattern. For example, I had four patterns, four repetitive pattern, and now I got four distinctive peak. That's our, I will say, really difficult to miss uh, in a, a real world application. And we see on the bottom, this is like a simulation of the, uh, fact on the, of the noisy pattern that we just saw, and this, uh, and this match filter uh, response, which, is br which still bring a really good uh, response in terms of, of peaks, which, uh, which means that we could detect our preamble even under zero dB SNR, uh, SNR condition that way. <clears throat> so now let's say that uh, my proof of concept is good. I generated the preamble and I detect it in, my, in, M, in, M, uh, in the M code and it was pretty easy. Uh, now the move that we need to make is to somehow generate some AGL code to implement it in an FPGA, uh, in an FPGA platform. And the tools that we are using and that, that I use actually is uh, Simulink, 
with System Generator block set, which uh, Louis Philippe introduced you. <coughs> so, what is the advantages of such uh, a way to generate our HDL code? First, uh, to me, it looks like the shortest uh, road to a complete bitstream generation. So, I'm talking about not only the HDL code, but also uh, taking care of the constraint, of the latency issue, the timing issue, and also to generate the final bitstream. Just, uh, I will say, uh, really bitstreaming had uh, in hand a way to go. And another big advantage, like we will see, is that uh, the Xilinx uh, generator, uh, system generator tools actually provide uh, simulations with cycle through and device specific uh, results, which means that you will have a lot less uh, problem, uh, I will say, to uh, debug timing uh, problems and latency problems in your algorithm, since you can spend and you simulate that in your model already. So another time saving tool there. And the fact, a big, I will say, tools for debugging is the fact that you can use actual simulating graphical debugging environment. Uh, to help you with that, so uh, some kind of plot is really always really much uh, easier to debug. And the coexistence between the simulating block set and the system generator block set brings a lot of also of tools which helps during uh, the development process. <clears throat> so this is the model which implements the two main algorithms that we saw earlier, the IA50 to generate the pattern and the match filtering which will actually uh, decode our uh, specific preamble. Uh, they are, these ones are uh, like below the sum models that I will show in the next slide. But just from the top model, I want to show a really uh, big feature of this is the coexistence of the links between Simulink and System Generator. It's not look like big, but these small white blocks here are Simulink blocks which are from wax, a workspace blocks. These blocks are pretty useful because the data I use for my simulation, we'll see, is the actual data from the M code I generated, which means that I can do some kind of bridge between my M code that I use and that actual model for simulation. So, uh, which, uh, which actually help a lot to make the, that bridge between uh, the both architecture.